Autumn is a time of transition. There's much going on in the new Dig Norfolk garden. In today's video, we're going to show you exactly what is happening. Hello and welcome back to the New Dig Norfolk Gardener. As I said, it's a month of transition. Summer crops have not quite finished yet. They're still going. And we have much in the garden that we can still be eating now. But also there is much in the garden that won't be ready, probably until December, through January, February, March, and April of next year. Now it goes without saying, do let us know in the comments how your autumn and winter garden is going. Did you make the plans like we did? We did lots of sow alongs, we did lots about succession planting earlier in the year. There was a complete four video series all about succession planting. So do let us know in the comments how you're getting on. We'll begin, as ever, in Plot 1. Plot 1 has grown carrots here all year. The first two rows we were eating between June and August. And now we just have these few left. This is a variety called Chantigny Red. They are a stump-rooted carrot. And if your ground is really heavy and you struggle to grow long carrots, great variety to grow. We used to grow that all the time before we were new dig, because our soil is heavy clay. But we grow them mainly now, just a row, because they're absolutely great for making your stocks, stews and casseroles. Next door to those is a brassica bed. You can see we have lots of cabbages, there's some Romanesco, and we still have side shoots coming from the Calabrese broccoli, which are very, very welcome at this time of year. You can see that the other side of that brassica bed in plot one, we have our Swedes. We also planted out a row of spring cabbages. They're coming on nicely and we'll get to a nice size before the really cold weather gets here. The Swede are looking really great. And as you saw in our last video, Mrs W does like to use a Swede. I love sweet. <laughs> <laughs> and then there are the squash. These are ready for their harvest now. And we should be harvesting these later on today. And it's not just the curry squash, because here in plot two, we've successfully grown some butternut squash. They're lovely, Mrs W. They are really good sized as well, aren't they? Yeah. And they too are ready for their harvest. Next door to those is a mixed bed. We have some red cabbage in there, one which is ready. The other two, they went in a bit later and they should give, a, give us a harvest sometime in November. And the other side of that are some jade cabbages. Now they are a winter cabbage and we won't be harvesting those until the turn of the year. It's going to be more like January and February that they will give us their heads. They're already starting to turn in, which is a really good sign, because the days really are shortening now. And this glorious light and sunshine won't be here forever. As we move further into autumn and then into winter. And then there's the celery here in plot two. We've been taking harvests of this for some time now. And as you know, my preferred method is just to take away a stalk as it becomes ready. But just like last year, we're going to be moving these into the polytunnel so that we can continue to have a harvest from these all the way through until February. We successfully done that last year. 
Now, in bed one in plot two, this is where we have our purple sprouting broccoli. And you can see that these two at the end here, which is early purple sprouting broccoli, they're due to give us a harvest in November. And it looks very much like it's going to. The top of the plant is actually now really turning in. So it's going to produce that cent central floret very, very soon. Probably within the next four to six weeks. And then next door we have our old favourite Rudolph. I know one or two of you have decided to grow that this year on our recommendation. That's looking really quite good too. And then lastly, there is the claret. The claret looks smaller. That's not unusual. It's not due for a harvest until late March and into April next year. And I never tire of thinking to myself just how wonderful nature is and the plants that we grow. We were actually really late getting these in because the previous crop took just that little bit longer. If you remember, it was really quite cool and cold in the early part of the year. These didn't go in until the end of July, did they? No, they were late <laughs> to go in, weren't they? So but they're looking good. Yeah, I'm really pleased to say that they've really caught up and it looks like we're bang on for that harvest that we want. Here in plot three, there is much going on. These cauliflowers, these brassicas you see here, they will not be ready until March and April of next year. And I remember, I don't know if it was last season or the season before, and they were there where the leeks are. And out of all the plants that I grew, we actually only got a couple to harvest. And I said then, next year, Mrs. W, we have to treat these like our babies <laughs> so that we bring them through to harvest. Because believe you me, in March and April, to have a lovely fresh cauliflower was just amazing. I'm very pleased to say these look so much better this year. Every plant is lovely and green, looking healthy. So I'm very hopeful that we will get some lovely harvest come March and April. Next door to those cauliflowers, we have our leeks. They're ready and available for us to have at any time now. Next door to the leeks, well, we have some Ruminescu plants, but also we have some cauliflowers which traditionally harvest at Christmas. So they'll give us harvest from late December and through into the following month in January. They're a variety called Triumphant. We've grown them before and they really do. You suddenly get a lovely big head of cauliflower to have with your Christmas dinner. And by the way, Mrs W wouldn't let me take this cabbage up. She said, look, it's throwing up some nice little new cabbages and they'll be nice little small ones. Well, actually, as usual, she was right. <laughs> and it is, you can actually see them turning in now. They are, you? definitely. They're not going to be big, but... So that was, that was just the stem of a cut cabbage that we harvested earlier in the summer, isn't it? Yeah, we didn't even bother putting a cross on the stem, as no. a lot of people sort <laughs> of say you do. should do. And look at it. <laughs> we shall see what happens. It's looking good so far. Whatever happened, you could eat those nice young leaves, even oh, yes. if they didn't heart up. So it's another meal. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know how many times I've said this on the channel, but, you know, there's always something new to learn all of the time. And the fact that that cabbage has done that, maybe just like the Calabrese broccoli, the later cabbages that we grow, where we've had harvest sort of July and August, can actually leave in the ground and we'll get some bonus harvests. In plot four, there is still much going on. Under this, because I've removed the cover from the sprouts so that we can see them. I don't know if Mrs W, you can get in there. You can see that we have some lovely parsnips. Now, they're ready and available to eat any time from now, but I do like a good frost on them because they just sweeten them up that little bit. And again, they will be something that we can harvest through November, December, January, February, 
until they decide that they want to start growing again. These will not get the chance. Parsnips are one of Mrs. W's weaknesses. <laughs> Next door to them to the right, in bed one in plot four, this is where our sprouts are. And as you can see, these are really starting to fill out. And yep. they will bring their harvest for us sometime in late November. And we'll be able to enjoy those all through December, the festive period. And if there's still some left, <laughs> January and February. And these were from a May sowing and then a June planting after the broad beans had finished here. Also, you can see we have a couple of curly kale plants and they really are quite delicious. If you've never grown that before, I would say, you know, do give them a go because they give you such great harvest over a very long period of time. Absolutely amazing crop. Here in this bed in plot four, it's been a mixed bag. We seem to have somewhat of a slug problem here. But the plants are recovering. We have some Calabrese broccoli here, which are bang on course to give us a harvest during November. And it's usually the latest time of the year that you'll get those. These poor cabbages were really suffering, weren't they, Mrs. W? They were. I thought we'd lost them, but they... Yeah. But they, they seem, seem to, to have, have recovered, have, yes. Picked up well. Whereas these cauliflowers, now these cauliflowers should be ready around about January time and February. They've just romped away. Haven't had any problems. Obviously the slugs in our garden, Mrs W, not don't so, like cauliflower. No, they're not so keen on the collie. <laughs> and then lastly, next to those, we have some lovely coal rabbi. And you can see that they are actually now starting to swell. Won't be long before they'll be ready for a harvest. And then lastly, this is the row of beetroot. They're looking really, really fantastic. And they're multi sown so again we just take the largest ones out. And then they are ready for us to eat. Now this is new to us this year and really like this. We do. I've not always been so keen on the red beetroot. I do eat it because I know that it's extremely good for me and it's a vegetable that you can eat for most of the year. You can sow it a few every few weeks or like we do, we sow it. We do two sowings a year, one in February, one in June. This is the June sowing. You can see they're looking absolutely amazing. But these are just a little bit sweeter, aren't they? They aren't quite so earthy no. as the bolt hardy that we grow. As I said right at the top of the video, autumn is a transitional time of year. We still have lots coming out of the undercover growing spaces. You can see here that our bell peppers are starting to ripen rapidly. Yeah, that needs to be harvested quite quickly, I think. Hopefully that will promote the green ones to ripen a bit quicker too. We're running out of time. <laughs> Chilies. Well, they're looking amazing. We've had one or two harvests from our chilli plants, haven't we? Yes, we have. But they are all starting to ripen up now. And it would have been a lot to do with the cold start we had to the year. These plants are warmth-loving plants. They don't like it when it's cool. So it took them a while to get themselves going. That's why they're still in here. Normally, by this time, we are emptying the undercover spaces and popping the plants in that will overwinter and give us harvest for next year. So if you're like us and have plants waiting, if they're only in small cell trays, make sure you pop them on. It won't do them any harm. Just give them a bit more space to grow in. And the fact that the plants are larger, well, they'd have grown like that if they'd have been in the spaces now. It'll just keep them going. My best guesstimate is that it'll be another two weeks before we've actually finished with these plants in here. But you never know. So that's the stage of playing our autumn garden. Still lots coming out of the greenhouse. Still lots to eat from the garden right here and now. But there is also the promise great harvest to come as we move into 2025. 
If you're not already subscribed, then why not? Hit that subscribe button and you'll be able to follow us all the way through our gardening year in our new dig Norfolk garden. But whatever you do, have a fantastic week in the garden and we shall see you again very soon. <laughs>